Hey everybody, it's me Stormy Grace and welcome back to this week's Eat and Greet where I've got our friend Terrence Gardino over for a visit and we were laughing before because I said his background is very Capricorn, very Saturn and monochromatic and I'm all the Venus and this is what happens you guys when when Saturn and Venus get together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's when Venus has to be like an adult. I have to like get serious, you guys. So I'm so glad to have you guys here. Hopefully you've been looking forward to this just the same way that I have. And you've been checking out the rest of the Eat and Greets as well. More astrologers are coming over. We'll discuss more topics, teach more skills, and it will just be an awesome, good time. So today we are going to start out the talk at the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that is coming up at the end of the year. And we're gonna take it all the way forward into next week, which is such a busy week of movement up in the heavens. So there is a lot going on. So nestle in, get your snacks, get your beverages, and we're gonna talk some astrology. So welcome, thank you for com coming back, actually. Yes, thank you for inviting me again. Yes, absolutely. I was laughing because I was telling Terrence, you guys, I had asked him to do an interview before and he did it. And I said, well, I'm officially stalking him now. So <laughs> no, you're great. No, thank you. Yes, absolutely. So Jupiter and Saturn, the timekeepers, the time lords, they're coming back together. This is a big yes. deal. Yes. I want to start with... Um, you know, all the astrologers for the past couple of years were talking about uh, the Saturn-Pluto alignment uh, peaking in January 2020. And I, and I said in many of my videos that this was going to be a paradigm shift, but because of the Jupiter and Saturn aligning by December of 2020, which marks a new 20-year uh, growth cycle and government cycle. That's December 2020, but January 2020 was the Saturn-Pluto alignment. Um, the, I look at the positive of Saturn-Pluto is Saturn is fixing what is broken Pluto. Um, now, that's so all of 2020 is this... Um, this whole breakdown and transformation politically, economically. I was trying to come up with, will there be a, a huge earthquake, a, a major terrorist attack? A, you know, nobody came up with a virus that I knew of. But something was going to happen in January, and then it would, and it would just domino through the rest of the year. So then the last week of February, um, the stock market began to crash and it was dropping a thousand points, 1500 points every single day. And I do a weekly webinar series on Saturday mornings. And I was thinking, how do I explain this? Um, I can't, talked about the last week of February, just because of the overall Saturn-Pluto that began in January. And it was like, oh, right. Let me look at the chart of the United States of America. And it lit up like a Christmas tree <laughs> because Pluto is in Capricorn when the U.S. was born. And most astrologers now use the Sagittarius rising and which would put Pluto in the second house of income. Pluto in Capricorn, corporate business. Pluto is about power and wealth. It's in corporate business, Capricorn in the second house of income. And what do you know? We became the richest country in the history of the world. Saturn comes along every 30 years. And, and Saturn was at 27 Capricorn, the degree of Pluto for the U.S., the last week of February. There it is. And that's when I started to uh, uh, correlate the, uh, the virus with the economy um, because the stock market crashed only because of the virus. And the Saturn Pluto is coming again the beginning of August, and finally at the end of November. And just as a quick aside, 
you know, you hear on television with all the commentators, they're expecting a second wave. And they says it could even be worse because as winter begins, like the end of November, we have flu season and we have the coronavirus coming back. And it's also the election just happened. Yeah. And there, there's going to be a whole lot of people are going to be unhappy, whichever way it goes, yeah. right? It can also affect the stock market, you know. So um, we still have a lot of this contraction, restructuring, um, fear economically for the whole year. The Jupiter-Saturn alignment in December uh, portends a lot of hopefulness and promise to start getting us back on track. So that could also mean we've got some medications, we, we may be on track, they may be having some trials with a vaccine, and the stock market is on a, a new path. But let's go, but now Jupiter is aligning with Pluto um, by itself. The first time was the first week of April. Pluto is all this powerful change. Jupiter is about expansion, right? Mm -hmm. So just with basic astrology, this comes, they do, these two planets come together about every 13 years. And the first time was the beginning of April. What happened at the beginning of the April? The stimulus package and the stock market stock, had hit its bottom already. And it's already, it's up quite a bit. It's, we still have huge losses but it's no longer going down, down, down. It leveled off and it's been going and it's more up than down. The second time the Jupiter is gonna retrograde and come back with Pluto is at the end of June, which is also when Venus will go direct. Um, and I think there could be another resurgence of the stock market because um, they're starting to open up businesses now. They'll probably open up a lot more in um, May into June. And fortunately, the Jupiter-Pluto will align one more time um, in November, right after the election. So the Jupiter-Pluto is telling me that the economy is going, to, it's going to keep the economy of the world from falling off the oh, cliff. Damn it, yeah. But the Saturn-Pluto is all this major restructuring. How have you seen it from your point of view? I was actually thinking about right as you were talking about the Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions as those were happening. I was thinking about the, the stimulus package, but this time as Jupiter and Pluto come together again in June, instead of us actually having this rise, I wonder if this is where we decide since they're both in retrograde at this meeting, that this is the other stimulus check that they were talking about, right? Something to stimulate the economy. It's almost like we go back to the original idea that we saw in April and say, okay, wait, how effective was that and so now here we land in June and it's like okay do we give them another check or do we go ahead and let these people go outside right do we stimulate the economy but one way or another I think it's an exact review of that particular situation that's exactly what I was thinking about we we're just talking about it in the videos today I never even thought of that great no yeah. no that's that's great now and with Saturn crossed over the US Pluto the end of February for the first time and all the markets collapsed around the world. But Jupiter is catching, you know, catching up to Saturn and Jupiter cross is now moving up to 20, it's now at 27 Capricorn and going retrograde next week. So for most of May, Jupiter is sitting on the U.S. Pluto. Right. And I thought way back in the end of March, April, that that could be when the stock market's really coming back because of it contracted with Saturn on Pluto, Pluto for the US. Then when Jupiter stops for several weeks on the Pluto, it should really start coming back. But the only reason it collapsed to begin with was the pandemic. So I really thought because I don't know anything about astrology and the virus, but that um, the stock market must be really coming back 
because they've got some medications, some remedies, and everything's coming back. Um, that's this whole month of May. The Jupiter will come back to the U.S. Pluto at the beginning of December, right before the Jupiter-Saturn alignment, after the elections, one way or the other. Um, so I'm really hopeful that things are going to be looking so much more promising with vaccines and medications and with the economy after the election, more going into December. But um, where was I going to? Um, oh, so I th was thinking that the stock market was really going to start taking off again in May 2020 because we're going to be finding out about some great medication. Um, but now what I'm seeing is half the country is just opening up. Yeah. Right? That's Jupiter. Um, maybe the market doesn't, you know, climb sky high. Of course, it's only the beginning of the month. But business is finally expanding where it contracted and we shut down all the businesses. Now the Jupiter's on the Plu U.S. Pluto and business is opening up. Part of that is two weeks ago, April 22nd, there was the new moon in Taurus conjuncting Uranus. Yeah. And so that whole tone for those next four weeks was about rebellion, break, you know, cabin <laughs> fever, breaking out yeah. of our homes. And that was the week that people started protesting yeah. You know, and there was a lot of this, you know, we got to go back to work and I, I we'll risk our health. And it's like, there's that rebellious Uranus being highlighted. And then right after that, Jupiter slowed into 27 Capricorn sitting on the U.S. Pluto. And the markets haven't come back sky high yet, but businesses are opening. Which creates an interesting dynamic there because the to stimulate the economy, the businesses are open, but that puts the people back together. And even in the United States chart, I believe that Pluto and Neptune are in aspect to each other. So it's like stimulating that virus over and over and over again, which is the challenge here. Now, this is what I'm concerned about. And it's, it's with uh, Saturn is going retrograde on the next in a few days on the 10th and we're gonna so i want to talk about what i think it means and we'll love to hear what you're gonna think yeah with venus and jupiter and saturn all within a few days going retrograde next week but saturn i want to start with saturn is going to retrograde by july the first back into capricorn mm -hmm. and the retrograde is uh, with Saturn is, did you get the lesson? Right. Right. And one of the, and as Saturn was moving forwards in Capricorn, it was the contraction of business because of the virus. Now it's going to retrograde. And now, now all this business is opening up and people are hitting the stores and the beaches. And I'm a little nervous. Mm -hmm. um, you can do what you want to do. I'm not leaving my apartment because when Saturn retrogrades, it'll be July the 1st, it's back into Capricorn. Yeah. And then by the beginning of August, it's, it's retrograded back over the U.S. Pluto. And I think what this means is, hey guys, you didn't it learn your lesson. Yes, that is exactly, that is exactly what I think is that as it goes back over, it's like, I'm just really checking to see if you understood what I said. And Saturn <laughs> goes back. And at the same time though, these Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions, especially in the United States chart, I think have said, look, I'm trying to show you the value of why we can't keep doing what we're doing. Let's try this a different way. We're gonna have them retrograde and, and conjunct again. But then what happens is, is they come together, Jupiter and Saturn come together at the end of the year and they're said, I told you, you needed to stay digital and away from each other for a while, right? It's almost as if I feel like 
in the forward motions of our timekeepers, they've been saying, look, I'm trying to peel from your cold, dead hands the structure of how things were going because we need to do this a little bit differently. And playing off what you said, which was really interesting, that there might be a second stimulus check going out at the, you know, or talking about or sending out at the end of June. But it's by the end of June that we're going to see the resurgence, I'm pretty sure, of the virus with all these people who are leaving their shelter. Sure. So um, that could also be why Congress is oh my God, we got to get these people to stay home again, and they can't stay home unless we can give them money. Right. That's a thought I just had. Yeah, which makes complete sense, right? The government's going to try, I mean, conspiracy theories aside, they're going to try to shelter in place until we kind of get a solution to okay, if it's just the same as the flu and you can go out and some people get it, some people don't, that's fine. But if this is bigger than that, where we let people come out or we have them out and people just start dropping off like flies, that's a completely different thing. So I think by the time we get to the end of the, uh, June, when Jupiter and Pluto come together, they will be presenting us with some rhyme or reason to shelter in place. As you know, opposed to come and out. Jupiter and Pluto doesn't always have to be all roses and money. and mm -hmm. Because Pluto is the darkness. Sure. And Jupiter could be expanding the darkness. Sure. Sure. Well, and now, Pluto wants to evolve. We have to, we, there's value, Jupiter, in the death. There's value in the evolution or the transformation. Jupiter is the planet of wisdom. He's like, I'm trying to help friends. <laughs> I want to, I want to um, talk about next week, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, all going retrograde. What in general, what this means to me is all this, we're moving into this whole new uh, chapters of our lives. And, the, and now these major planets are going to appear to stop. Mm -hmm. And what this, my point of view is, this is, um, this is not the time to be, because they're saying that they were testing some businesses this weekend. Next weekend, they're going to open up a lot more businesses as the retrogrades. And I can see how some part of, of the mass consciousness is Let's go back the way it was, sure. retrograde. But when the planets stop, to me, that's when we should stop and reflect and stop like running helter-skelter all over the place and heading to the beaches, but just stop and reflect the retrograde on what's been going on these last couple of months and be quiet and go, you know, and reflect on what we are supposed to be learning. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that in the global scheme of things, because there are timekeepers, we'll do the evaluation then and try and come up with new plans. But personally, when Saturn touched in March into the energy of Aquarius, I think for all of us, it stimulated that question of, do you know how to use technology? Do yes. you know how to do these? Do you have the skills here? But as Saturn comes in, you know, I think it's this first little, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. It's very, you are immediately aware of what you don't know. You know what I mean? So now he's given us a taste to say, probably this is why you're going to need to use it. Because I know I've had clients calling me, sitting with me, crying, saying, I got to work. And I don't know how to work from home yet. I don't know how to use the tech pieces. So how I have to go back into my normal life. And that's not what they want because they're not prepared for that. But then as Jupiter retrogrades, I do like that. I don't think everybody gives Jupiter credit for being firm, but wise. And as he retrogrades, I think he asks truly, where have you been being overconfident about your ability to work and to provide? Where have mm -hmm. you been being overconfident about your skills? Where do you need new mm -hmm. training, new talent? And it'll likely be in a field of tech. Where can you provide on your own? And what do you need the skills to be able to do that? So I think we stop 
and we re-edit and review and revise as well so that as we come forward, because the new norm may not be for many people around the world to go out and work in big old groups for a while. There may be other ways. You just reminded me of the Jupiter-Saturn alignment in December is in Aquarius the first time in about 700 years. Aquarius is it's starting this new 200 year cycle of technology, the digital age. But so that's December, but this end of March through June, it's been briefly in Aquarius. You know, Aquarius is also not only technology, but science. science. And what, what blew my mind, it, what, I didn't come up with this, somebody else brought it to my attention, that right, you know, as Saturn went into Aquarius, we were, we were forced to let go of our old ways of shopping because now, whoever heard of shopping with your groceries online? <laughs> now, everybody, now I can't do it because I'm in Los Angeles and everybody already figured it out before I did. <laughs> I can't get, I can't get on. Sure, sure. Or you're like two weeks out. I know that that's been a big thing here. People are trying to order their groceries and they're like, well, we can get, get that to you in a week. It's like, oh, well, that's not gonna work either, right? Uranus and Taurus yeah. though is like, you and better know how to garden. The end, I think it was the end of March. Maybe it's the beginning of, of April. Um, I finally decided to order masks. So it must have been the end of March. It's like, oh, this is serious. I'll go on Amazon and I'll order oh. some mask. No. I'm still waiting. Yes. For <laughs> Absolutely. I know, like, they'll be back in stock in July. So you can probably have them in September. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that that Saturn movement was a big wake up call. That's my experience of Saturn whenever it changes signs anyways. It initially just kind of stun guns everybody and says, yeah. this is what you don't know and what you're not prepared for. I'll be back to help. Yes. Now Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Uranus is in Taurus and Taurus wants to go slow and Uranus does not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so there's all this anxious, stressful energies mm -hmm. um, because all that stable, steady energy just keeps blowing up. Yeah. Um, but it's all, it's also Uranus is all this technology and, and, and also the science and it's going to a lot of people, it's going to slow Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because everybody's on here. <laughs> We're all online together now, friends. One other thing Aquarius represents is friends, right? Groups. So it, Aquarius is the sign of the collective. And Saturn is where every 30 years we need to be realistic and take accountability for our, uh, the collective um, working together. Um, this is called the global village. Yeah. And um, so it's not just in your town, it's the planet. Because the reality of Saturn in Aquarius is um, it's not about you. Um, right. Because there could be a poor country in Russia, in Africa, and if they all get really sick, we all going to continue to get really sick. Yeah. So really, when we always heard this, this adage of um, we're only as strong as the weakest link, that's the age, of, oh, and we're going into the age of Aquarius and the Jupiter-Saturn alignment that starts a new 20-year growth cycle is in Aquarius. Um, so it's all about brotherhood. Yeah. Well, and I... I look at those those um, Aquarian waves, and I think yes. sometimes we forget that those waves look 
together, but they are not. This is the individual and this is the whole. So the idea of what does the individual bring to the whole, that is going to be touching us at every single level in a way that I think we're so blown up and aware of because of the virus. Honestly, yes. it's what stimulated the, the movement to be thinking that way. And Uranus and Taurus, though, I will tell you, I think is, is good and really useful as Saturn comes into Aquarius as well and stays there for the long haul because Uranus will take those little electric fingers and get in the dirt, right? And get down there. This is why I think we see the resurgence of all of these herbalists coming out of everywhere. All of these gardening classes, all of the breathwork classes <laughs> are blowing around. One more th subject to talk about. We can be here unless, all day. unless you bring up other things. Venus is going retrograde next week from the 13th through June the 25th. But so relationships are reevaluated, they're tested, we're feeling separated. Um, you don't ever, you know, I always used to joke around for years that if you should fall in love with Venus in retrograde, like hold back, it's ne not necessarily the kiss of death. They may be a genuine loving person, sure. but there it could be on the rebound and you don't know it and they go back to their partner, yeah. you know, or the more dastardly, they're married and they're lying to you. Um, but this Venus in retrograde, it's going to retrograde at exactly 21 Gemini squaring Neptune at 20 Pisces. And it's pretty much there this whole month of May. So there's an, an a quasi positive, not really. <laughs> Venus intention and conflict with Neptune could be all this dreamy idealism. I found my soulmate and you're just off in the clouds until reality sits in and it's a great big disappointment because the person you fell in love with is not authentic or real. Um, but this is when you might really be questioning relationships. The other thing with Neptune is evasiveness and secrets. And it could even come up that um, your partner is cheating on you, mm -hmm. and you and you discover it during the Venus retrograde to Neptune. But it but it could be you. You could just be unhappy, unfulfilled with your relationship. But what I see so many times with my counseling is people make everything so messy. It's like, all right, you fell out of love. We all do it. It's normal move on, yeah. don't, you know, get the divorce, move out of the house, blah, blah, blah. But no, <laughs> no. aggressive and they have to let themselves fall in love with somebody else mm -hmm. uh, to make sure they're not going to be lonely, but creating all this drama and lies and disappointments. So I would advise if you are unhappy with your relationship and you find yourself getting infatuated with somebody else, go, okay, I need to clean up my current relationship. Sure. And I think that I see too with Venus retrograde in relationships that even if they're good, healthy ones, people have to need, they need to have a conversation about some finances, right? And, and, and a, oh my God, now we're all at home. You can shop at the click of a button. I mean, what, what's happening with your finances? And the value of your information, the value of what you're sharing between each other, this is going to need a review. Especially, I think about too, you know, um, our quarantine couples. God bless them. Even I love being in the house with my husband. We found all sorts of things to talk about. And then it was like, oh, we should review that. Let, let's go a little bit deeper and review that conversation. So good, bad, or indifferent, there's a revelation of, of information and conversation available here. You brought up something very important. Venus is retrograding in Gemini. Gemini is about information and communication. Venus is the planet of what we value. So we value um, information. 
We value good heartfelt conversations, mm -hmm. but it's squaring Neptune. Right, so we're like, do I say it? Do I don't say that? I'm kind of insecure, that's weird. Can I trust them? Or yeah. are you just being paranoid? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we've got the nodes who have shifted, and I do love the nodes because I feel like wherever they go, we, we get on board with what's going on. So well, they're looking they just, for new information. And they just entered the other day, Gemini. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so then and the we're Venus detaching. is retrograding in Gemini. In Gemini. And we're detaching from that self node, like the old way that things had to yeah. do, my perceptions, my beliefs, my whatever. But it doesn't but mean... We suck at the North Node. We, got to, we have to practice. <laughs> but you brought up a great point because once every 19 years, the North Node will move into Gemini. And so this whole collective human experiment mm -hmm. is about this awakening the need for communications. Yeah. Um, and here's Venus retrograding in Gemini so we've got, it's got to slow us down and realize we are not communicating very well at all. Right. And we need to really look at that. And the karmic north node aligning with Venus right now and Venus retrograde, it becomes much more intense. Relationships become really important. The other thing is, and this is, what, this is what's been great, um venus is the arts the arts yes and oh my god all of these incredible musicians and singers um are doing all this on instagram and yeah. on youtube and you're hearing the most amazing music and so that is also it's in the positive of the venus neptune inspiring us healing us yeah well, and it's the divine confusion. So I feel like as a people, we're like, well, which set of information do I trust? Which I have also loved the stimulated Uranian energy that's out there because it's brought normal, average, everyday people who just happen to be good researchers onto the internet as well. And they're like, no, that's not what happened there. The media says this, but here's the facts. So it's literally taken the individual and given them to the whole in these value of information kind of ways, which I think is wonderful. And we're going to need a lot of that mm -hmm. with, with Venus valuing information, squaring Neptune while Venus is a retrograde. There means there's going to be a lot of false and misleading information. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can't, you have to take everything. You got to start thinking for yourself, take everything with a grain of salt. You know, is it these uh, hackers in Russia or China who is bombarding Facebook to tell you all these horrible things? You know, got to, you have to stop and think. Yeah. And it's just such a, it's so confusing is the challenge there, especially if we've got just generations of people like there's the generation gap we hit again of people being really comfortable online and then those that are not i don't know how many times i've heard just in this last month about the high usage of online like people coming online and the scams and people you know what i mean whereas oh, opposed to connected, lots of scams lots of scams lots of scams and then you have the generation who's super you know or the tech heavy people who are like oh don't click that that's a scam but how do you know if you if you don't know Yes, yes. Yeah. One more thing, because you know with astrology, you can talk for an hour. <laughs> but just one more thing. The Saturn retrogrades May the 10th, and it goes all the way back to 25 degrees of Capricorn. Um, what, on, on, um, what did I write here? September the 29th. Then it starts to move forwards again at 25 Capricorn. So one of the basics in astrology is that what we that um, the last time Saturn was at 25 Capricorn was the beginning of February. Sure. Actually, Jupiter is going to go uh, not go will go direct by um, September the 12th at seven. 
uh, is it 17 Capricorn. Mm -hmm. The last time was back in February. So mm -hmm. Jupiter and Saturn are going to be, come September, are going direct and having us go back to all those lessons from February right. to now to start cleaning up. Yeah. Did you get it? Because I'm leaving this area and I want you to have solid foundation to stand on. So have you made progress? I think is the question because they're going to leave and they're going to move on if we haven't paid attention and done the work, which I really believe as the global family and smaller families, people have genuinely taken a look around. Plus you get five months and you watch astrology, you know, to get your tacos in a row. You know, that's helpful. I want to... Um end this with a, uh, just a funny antidote. Because um, we're going into the full moon tonight, tomorrow morning. The full moon can bring us out of hiding. Um, my, that might be a little dangerous for all these people like, you know, running out to the stores. But my car had been in the shop for four weeks. And it was and days ago, they finally called me and said, we don't know what's wrong with your car. <laughs> we'll get back to you. And I am freaking out because I no longer have a warranty because my car is now five years old. And I'm thinking, because Capricorn, I go right to the dark side. <laughs> Are they going to charge me $100 an hour for all the time they're trying to figure out what's wrong with my car, only to say, well, you oh, we, you now owe us $3,000, but we don't know what's wrong with your car. Right. That's the, that's the dark side of Capricorn. So this morning, as we're going into the full moon, they called and said, your car is fixed, come and get it. And I said, oh my God, thank you. How much is this going to cost me? And they said, no charge. And the, fun, and, the, and the little funny anecdote was, this is the full moon, everything coming to light. Yeah. Two weeks ago was the new moon. And for me, the new moon was in my 12th house of incubating and hiding. And so now with the full moon, I can go get my car and drive around. And you'll be free. And I'll be free. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, that's interesting. The new moon was in my ninth house which is where this is the house of my son as well and the um, full moon is going to be happening in my third which is really right. next to my jupiter so this was a perfect couple of days to do an interview and post it all online that's right well i tell you when mercury came over my venus i felt like i emailed everybody i was like i love you all please come visit <laughs> Well, and here we are. Stormy, thank you so much for inviting me. I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, good. I love it. I, I always enjoy talking to you, having you over, seeing what you think about certain things. It's it's very nice. And as I continue on, it, it's just nice to have astrology buddies. Yes, yes. All so, right. Yes, I got to go get my car. Yeah, you got to go get your car. And I got to finish my coffee because I didn't during the eat and greet because we were chatting. Thank you guys so much for being here. We look forward to having you next time at the next eat and greet. So make sure you check the community tab, the Facebook, Instagram, wherever you follow me, the information will be there. Thanks again, Terrence. We Thank will see you guys you. next time. Bye.